that a bunch of extra dust in here or is that just a smoke screen? Team, keep it clean. Let's read the report straight from Adam Schefter. Former Seahawks Pro Bowl safety Jamal Adams is visiting today with the Baltimore Ravens. And how did that make y'all feel when y'all first saw that notification? Well, I'm going to tell y'all how it made me feel. I thought, hmm, why? For what? What would be the reasoning? I don't feel like he is the best fit i feel like we need more of a drop back safety not somebody who's a box safety but then i thought about it i talked to some people about it and i i visualized jamal adams with the baltimore ravens and what does he do well that could fit the baltimore ravens uh what could he bring to the team well him being in the box he he brings a physicality to the baltimore ravens and you know they love some physical players i mean football is a physical sport but baltimore ravens they like the players a little extra physical a little extra nasty and whatnot and jamal adams he could possibly bring that um he is somebody that was used a lot as a blitzer so he could help with the baltimore ravens pass rush i know we got a lot of questions about the pass rush right now um but he could possibly be one of those answers i know one of the famous words that you see uh if a team brings in a player that a lot of fans don't like they say washed he's done oh man he ain't got it anymore his career is over what are we doing and I did see a lot of people say that about the Baltimore Ravens, but I also saw a lot of people say the same thing about Jadavian Clowney when the Baltimore Ravens brought him in. I saw a lot of people say the same thing about Ronald Darby when the Baltimore Ravens brought him in. When they signed Kyle Vannoy, a lot of Baltimore Ravens fans said the same thing. So if there is any ounce of hope, if the Baltimore Ravens can resurrect his career, then, hey, we be all for it. Now, um, my biggest concern with this possible signing, it is just a visit. But possible signing would be what type of impact would this have on Kyle Hamilton? Because that is, in my opinion, and I think a lot of the opinions of Baltimore Ravens fans, one of the biggest reasons why we need another safety to be brought in. Because Kyle Hamilton, he needs to be free. He needs to be everywhere. Kyle Hamilton can literally do every single thing that you ask him to do. Even if you don't ask him to do it, he could do it. So you do not want to try to fix something that's not broken with Kyle Hamilton. So if you bring in a Jamal Adams, can he drop back? Yeah, he could. So he could possibly be interchangeable. So you could have him drop back sometimes. You could have him in a box sometimes. And they do the same thing with Kyle Hamilton. And you know with the Baltimore Ravens, especially on his defense, a lot of it is about the more that you can do. How versatile can you be? Because you think about different players on this Baltimore Ravens uh, defense and you think about, wow, they don't just do that. They do that as well. Marlon Humphrey, outside corner, but... He'll go to the slot as well. And he plays some good slot cornerback. Brandon Stevens, he's a cornerback, but he'll drop back and play some safety too. Trenton Simpson, he's expected to be a linebacker, but he's a pass rusher. He's an edge guy. He'll drop back as well. He's supposed to be a Mr. Do-It-All. Kyle Hamilton. Oh, yeah. Literally everything uh and there's some more as well but that seems to be a theme when it comes to the baltimore ravens especially on defense because when you got multiple guys that can do multiple things that makes it harder to read your defense that makes it easier for you to disguise your defense so somebody like a jamal adams he could come in and do something like that with the baltimore ravens now with Jamal Adams, we talked about him as a pass rusher. That's something that he did a lot early on in his career. His first year, 2017, uh, he had 83 tackles, two sacks. 2018, 115 tackles, three and a half sacks. 2019, 75 tackles, six and a half sacks. 2020, when he got traded to the Seattle Seahawks, he had 83 tackles and nine and a half sacks. This man was going crazy with it, but for the past three years, he hasn't registered a sack at all. He did get two picks in 2021, but no more sacks at all. But what was the difference? What, what happened over the past couple of years? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, in 2017, his rookie year, he played 16 games. The next year, he played 16 games. In 2019, he played 14 games. In 2020, he played 12 games. In 2021, he played 12 games. In 2022, he only played one. And then last year, he only played in nine. So he's certainly been dealing with some injuries uh, over the past couple of years that have limited his play and if your play is limited then your production is certainly limited as well uh, so that is something to keep an eye out for when it comes to Jamal Adams um, because health health is wealth as we know um, now something that I was thinking of too what this 
visit could mean it could mean a lot of different things obviously the Baltimore Ravens are in the market for safety obviously they're looking around to add somebody to this defense at the safety position because it is a need Geno Stone he left he left he went to the Bengals and Ravens have not filled that void of course they drafted Sanusi Kane um, they also signed Bo Brady and those are both rookies though one's a seven round pick one's an undrafted rookie free agent so there's a possibility that they could fill in the spot. But, you know, the Baltimore Ravens, with the status that they are right now, they're in win-now mode, and they're trying to get to the Super Bowl. Not saying that the rookies can't do it, but we cannot expect them to delegate those safety responsibilities to a rookie. Not right here, right now. If they were in rebuild mode or something like that, if they were a team that was just retooling, rebuilding everything, then okay, I understand. But this is not the year for that. So uh, they are definitely looking at signing a veteran safety. But if they're not going to go in the rookie's direction, then Jamal Adams. But one thing that we have known these Baltimore Ravens to do, and we know this happens in business. We know it happens uh, in the NFL for sure. Smoke screens. Smoke screens happen all the time, especially with these Baltimore Ravens. So could this be a smoke screen for somebody different? We've seen it time and time again when they may be talking to somebody, they may be having conversations with somebody, they may be having contract negotiations with another player. Uh, we've seen it happen before to where contract negotiations may not be going so good. They may not be going so swell and dandy. So what the Baltimore Ravens will do, say, oh, okay, watch this. We're going to bring this guy in. We're going to bring him in. And, hey, we bring him in. You don't want to talk cool. We got somebody that can come in for us right now. So you let us know. You get back to us. We're going to go move on to him. And when you put that pressure on somebody, it's, it's a risk. It's a big risk, especially in business, but it's a big risk in negotiations. But that's part of it. You got to do what you got to do. So could Jamal Adams be a smoke screen for somebody else? I know a lot of us have been looking and talking and hoping and wishing that our Baltimore Ravens get somebody like Justin Simmons. Because in my opinion, I think he would be a perfect fit for the Baltimore Ravens. Perfect fit. Reason being because he is extremely productive. He's been healthy. He's a great safety. I don't even know why he's still out there. I don't know how he's still out there. This dude must be asking for like $25 million per year. That's the only reason I can think that he is still a free agent. He must be asking for $25 million a year. That, that's it. Because I don't understand any reason why somebody of his caliber is still available how how is that even possible but anyway uh with the baltimore ravens uh, justin simmons would fit in great especially for two reasons one obviously because kyle hamilton that can allow him to continue to do everything that he does but another reason is because marcus williams and the reason i bring up marcus williams is because marcus williams is a very tricky player for the baltimore ravens the skill is there the ability is there He's nice. That boy can play. But we talked about with Jamal Adams, health is wealth. With Marcus Williams, health is wealth. And he hasn't been wealthy for the Baltimore Ravens the past two seasons. He's only been with the Baltimore Ravens for the past two seasons, but he's missed a significant amount of time both seasons because he ain't been healthy. And it's crazy because, again, before he joined the Baltimore Ravens, when he was with the Saints, which seemed like ages ago, he was fine. Health was there. It was, it was no, no, no problem. But he came to the Baltimore Ravens in these past two seasons. It's just been very unfortunate. Now, both seasons, the good thing has been, even though he's went out for a significant amount of time both seasons, he has come back to finish him. So he has finished the season healthier, not his healthiest because he's been banged up for both of them. But he has come back to finish. So he hasn't been out for the entire season, but he's been out for a big chunk of both of them. So this is another reason, in my opinion, that you want to have the most quality depth that you can possibly have. Now, something else that somebody mentioned that I thought was very interesting about the possibility of adding a Jamal Adams to this Baltimore Ravens defense. They said, oh, he could be a possible replacement for Patrick Queen. I said, huh? What about Trenton Simpson? Because we got Trenton Simpson. He's an actual linebacker. He's a do-it-all linebacker. He can move everywhere. He can blitz. He got speed. He can cover. He can do all that stuff. But they said, well, if Trenton Simpson doesn't work out the way we want him to work out, then you still got a Jamal Adams. Now, I don't think they would exclusively put Jamal Adams at linebacker like that. But, again, the same thing we talked about, the more you can do. The more you can do. And with Jamal Adams, if, if they can just get, he ain't got to be the Jamal Adams that he was 2019, 
2020. He ain't got to be that Jamal Adams. I mean, we would love that. We would love the Pro Bowl version of Jamal Adams. That would be an amazing thing. But if they can just bring him back, give him a resurgence, and allow him to be another tight end eraser, sort of like Super Duper Kyle. Him being interchangeable could do wonders for the Baltimore Ravens defense. So I do really see the positives with it. I do understand how a lot of people see it as not the best fit. And and I get that because I think we need somebody who's more of a drop back guy. But again, Jamal Adams, he can do a bit of both. And the versatility is there. So maybe that can be an answer for the Baltimore Ravens. But we'll see very, very soon whether this is just a visit to actually get a deal done. Or it actually means something else. Team, keep it clean. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on. Leave a like on the video because it helps out a lot. And let me know what you think about Jamal Adams possibly being a new Baltimore Raven. Because if we remember, a couple years ago, or well, more than a couple years ago, the Baltimore Ravens, they wanted Jamal Adams. They tried to get a Jamal Adams. They tried to trade for a Jamal Adams years ago. Obviously, it did not work out. But... They sure made the attempt. And you know these Baltimore Ravens, for players who they really, really, really like, that's why I really, really do think this is a real possibility. But for players who they really, really, really like, that they tried to get one time and it failed, they come back around and try again. See guys like Justin Houston. See more recent guys like Derrick Henry. Will Jamal Adams follow into those same footsteps? It's to be determined. We'll see.